Now at the beginning of chapter 2 we discussed the mean and the median and we said that the mean and median are um, measures of the center. Now is it enough to just know the center of the distribution? Now let's look at quick examples. Now we have graphs A, B and C. Now these are just rough sketches but is it clear that each one of these is a symmetrical distribution? Now if we just know the center of the distribution that doesn't really describe the entire distribution. We also need to know how spread out the data are. So in this part we're going to discuss certain measures of uh, spread. We start with the definition of the terms maximum and minimum. Uh, it's pretty obvious what they are. If you have a data set, the maximum would be the largest number and the minimum would be the smallest number. And it's important to know this to see what the range of values in the data set are. Now we've discussed the uh, median. If we have a data set and we arrange the entries in order, the median is, a, is the middle number that splits the data set into two equal parts. So the number of entries to the left of the median is same as the number of entries to the right of the median. Now this is the minimum and that's the maximum. Now if we further split the left, the, all the entries on the left, if we take the median of those entries, that would split the left half into two equal parts. The number that splits the left half of the data set into two equal parts is called the lower quartile. We can do the exact same thing uh, with the entries on the right of the median. We can find the middle number between the median and the maximum and that would be the lower quartile Q3. So the three numbers Q1, the median and the quartile split the data set into four equal parts. Now another important point, do, do quartiles have units? The answer is yes, because just like the median uh, has units, it's the middle number, the quartiles are also numbers in the data set, so they would have the same units as the uh, original numbers in the data set. Now let's look at this example. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers. So the sample size is 9. Since it's an odd number, we can find the middle number and it's the fifth number. It's easy to locate the middle number, but um, this is exactly what we do. Add 1 to 9 because it's an odd number divide by 2 that gives us 5 so the fifth number is the median so this is the fifth number and that's the median now the median splits the uh, data set into two equal parts we have four numbers to the left and four numbers to the right so we look at the four numbers to the left uh, we have n to the left n equals 4 so we have four numbers to the left it's an even number so there are two middle numbers which is the second number and the third number so it, we really didn't need to do the calculations but I just did that to remind you how to use the the quick rule to get the position of the uh, median so we have the two middle numbers what do we do with the two middle numbers take the average the average of 2 and 2 is 2 so 2 is called the lower quartile. We repeat the exact same process on the right. We locate the two middle numbers, take the average, the average of 4 and 4 is 4, so the upper quartile is 4. 
uh, we can use the calculator of course to figure this out quickly um, in fact you should be using the calculator to do these calculations because uh, the data sets that you're going to see will be much larger so the three numbers q1 the median and q3 together split the data set into four equal parts next we discuss the five number summary of a distribution what are the five numbers uh, that can be used to describe the distribution the shape it gives us the shape of the distribution as well now we look at the data set here we use the stat function in our calculator to figure out the five numbers and the five important numbers are the minimum the maximum the median in the middle the lower quartile to the left of it and the upper quartile to the now using these five numbers we can construct a graph which is called a box plot so let's just first draw the horizontal and the vertical axis we have numbers ranging from 1 through 5 so let's mark these um, the vertical axis 2 3 4 and 5 we then mark the minimum and the maximum so the minimum is 1 the maximum is 5 and we also mark the quartiles and the median so the first quartile is here that's the second quartile and the median um, right in the middle here so this is the minimum that's the maximum this is Q1, the median, and Q3. Now this is how a box plot is constructed. Draw a box around the quartiles. Draw a line going through the median join the upper quartile with the maximum and the lower quartile with the minimum so this is a called a box plot the center here is called the box and sometimes it's also called the box and whisker plot these are called the whiskers of the plot a box and whisker plot gives us a lot of information it gives us the minimum the maximum and the quartiles and notice that the median is running right in the middle of the box so this tells us that it is a symmetrical distribution uh, the whiskers here are the exact same size so it kind of gives us the uh, shape of the distribution as well in the next example we have uh, scores of students from two different sections of the same class and we're going to compare the performance of these two classes by using uh, two box plots side by side. So we have two sections here and the scores of the two sections are given. Both have sample size 11. So we can construct the two side by side box plots using crunch it uh, just follow the instructions that I've given earlier. Um, constructing side-by-side -side box plots helps us uh, compare the performance of the two classes. Um, by looking at the box plots, if we need to make any comparison, we first need to study each distribution separately and then put the two together and see how they are different. So start off with the first section. The minimum is... Uh, really this number which is 0 um, the lower quartile is 5 the median is 7 and the upper quartile is 8 the maximum is 10 the range of values is from 0 through 10 so the range of the data set is 10 minus 0 which is 10 
the difference between the quartiles q1 and q3 is called the interquartile range or the iqr so the interquartile range is um, 8 minus 5 which is 3 so what can we can say about the first section is that the range is large it's from 0 through 10 and the range is about 10 points in addition um, we have a left skewed distribution because of the high or rather the low outlier which is a zero which is far removed from the rest of the data it's much lower now let's look at section two so in the second section notice that the minimum is six the maximum is ten the median is 8, so that's the median. The lower quartile is 7, and the upper quartile is 9. Uh, notice that the range is the maximum minus the minimum, which is equal to 4. All the scores uh, range from 6 through 10. So that says that the performance of the second section as compared to the performance of the first section was much better. Um, all the values or all the scores were between uh, 6 and 10. Now let's look at the shape of the distribution in the second section. It looks like it is almost perfectly uh, symmetrical. The maximum and these stems are the same size the median runs right in the middle so it looks like a perfectly uh, symmetrical distribution now overall if we had to compare uh, the performance of the the, the, the two sections uh, you can see that the box plot for section 2 is set much higher that shows that the scores were much higher uh, the ranges when we compare the ranges of the two uh, distributions um, what that tells us is the range of the second distribution was much smaller than the range of the first distribution, which means that the scores uh, for the second section were more consistent and uh, higher than that of the first section. Another important term that we need to know is uh, the interquartile range that I used in the previous slide. Interquartile range is just the difference between the two quartiles, the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So that is the interquartile range. Uh, we can use the calculator to come up with the quartiles in this example. We have uh, the lower quartile equals 7 and the upper quartile is 9. The difference between the two is 2 and that would be the interquartile range about 50 percent the middle 50 percent of the data set um, is um, within those values 7 through 9 and the range of the middle 50 percent of the data set is 2 which is the interquartile range.